Deep underground, we're gonna add custom ores to Minecraft. Alright, we find ourselves back in Gentle Two once more, and in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding custom ore generation to Minecraft. Now, for this, first and foremost, what we're going to need is actually the two other ores that we have not added here. I've basically alluded to them and I have given you the textures. So this would be the endstone tanzanite ore and the netherrack tanzanite ore. Now we've pl seen plenty of times how to add blocks. So I think that I can just copy this over and you should either already have those or you can just take a look at the GitHub repository or the gist to copy that stuff over. It really shouldn't be anything crazy at this point. Because yes, we're also going to include the adding or the world generation for both the nether as well as the end. Because that is something that a lot of people have been asking for and it actually isn't that hard. However, there are like two things that you need to keep in mind to actually get this to work. And I want to show this as well. And there we go. Adding all of the JSON files and all of this craziness and the two registrations here. And then we can proceed to the actual world gen stuff. So how does this going to work? Well, in the tutorial mod package, we're going to right click a new package called a world. And then inside of there, we're going to need two new packages. And that's going to be the feature package, as well as in the world package again, the gen package. We're going to start with the feature package in here. We need two classes. Now we're going to start with the con mod configured features class, and we're going to fill this first and foremost. So the first thing we need here is once again, a public static void called register configured features. And this is going to be just a static method here. And this is going to do once again, tutorial mod dot logger. And then we're just going to say a debug registering the mod configured features or tutorial mod that mod ID. And now this is extremely important. We actually have to call this at the very top. So this has to be called at the top of your on initialize method. I'm not 100% sure why that is the case, but this is just what I found. Otherwise, it will not properly work. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over each field individually and explain what it does. So we're going to start with the list of ore feature config targets. And this is called the overworld tanzanite ores. Now, this is a list, right, as you can see, of ore feature targets. What does that mean? We're basically looking at what we can replace in the world with our ore blocks. This is going to be needed for each ore that you have. So you can't just add, you know, two more ores there, add another stone replaceables for, you know, I don't know, like tin ore or whatever. You actually would need another list for this. So that's very important, number one. And number two, you can see we have two entries in this list. One of them is for stone replaceables and the other one is for deep slate replaceables because of course the stone one because of course stone, we want to replace it with normal ore and deep slate, we want to replace with deep slate ore. Now the second one is for the nether tanzanite. So you can see we need a new list for the nether as well, or at least I highly suggest to doing so because here you can see we're basically replacing the base stone nether with the nether tanzanite ore. Shouldn't be anything too crazy at this point. And also, of course, all of the code that I'm copying over is available to you in the description below, GitHub repository, and individual gist as well. And then last but not least, the one that people struggle with is the, the end generation, because here you need to just make a new block matching rule set, basically saying, hey, we can replace end stone with this particular block over here. That is all that we need to do in this case, and that is actually all of the magic in that moment. But then the question is, what, what do these lists actually get us? Well, it, of course, specifies what blocks can be replaced by our custom ores, but then we still need to make a, you know, some sort of configured feature for this. So once again, I'm going to copy over field by field, but this is the one for the tanzanite ore itself. This includes the normal tanzanite ore as well as the deep slate tanzanite ore, because as you can see, what we're doing is we're calling configured features that register, passing in our name over here. This needs to be, of course, once again, unique. We're then passing in feature.or and then making a new or feature config and then passing in the list right here. So you can see we're passing in this list and that is basically how they are connected. This size right here determines the vein size. So this would be, I believe it should be the average vein size. I'm not 100% sure if it's the average or the max, something like that. But this is basically the vein size. So change this as you want. I suggest not going below three because then your ores can be very, very sparse around the world. So just as a tip over there. And then we have the nether tanzanite ore and the end tanzanite ore. Now this, those look, as you can see, very, very similar. 
basically we're just using the different list over here and then we're just using different sizes in this case you can of course change those as you wish highly recommend playing around with them that is always one of the greatest things to try and do some things so then that is actually all that we need in this class let's go into the feature package once more right click new java class and this is going to be called the mod placed features now in this class once again i will just copy over line by line or let's say field by field the first thing we're going to need is actually three helper methods now i will show where i'm getting those from the general idea is that those should be in the or features so if we actually go into the or place features right here you can actually see those three methods down here and i basically just copied them over because they're private and they are very useful to us so that is why i copied them over now this is of course once again also available to you in the description below and then what we can do is we can get the first one over here. So this is going to be a registry entry of place feature called Tanzanite or placed. Now you can see here we're using the configured feature that we've made right here. So you can actually, if you middle mouse button click on this, you can see this one right here, the configured feature is used right here. And then we're calling the modifiers with count. And if I, let's just format this a little bit differently. There we go. You can then see I'm calling this. So the count right here, this should be veins per chunk. And then we make a height range placement modifier of type trapezoid. So basically we're going to make it so that it's going to spawn from negative 80 all the way to plus 80. But most of it is going to spawn right in the middle of those two, which would be zero. Now what I highly recommend is playing around with the different ones. So you can make this trapezoid uniform and you can also supply different height providers. And then you can also change the offset over here to different things. So for example, you can get fixed over here as well and then below top i'm not 100 sure what the difference is with all of them once again this is one of the things that just play around with this and then you hopefully will get the ore spawning as you wish them to spawn but let's just keep this as a fix that's going to be fine and let's actually increase this a little bit to like nine just so that we're going to be able to find our ores i always highly recommend doing that because that's just going to make this a little bit easier to actually find them in the world I'm going to copy over the nether one and the Tanzanite one as well. And I'm going to copy over the nether and the end one as well. And you can see pretty much looks almost exactly the same. Let's just do fixed here as well. Why not? I'm like, once again, I highly recommend playing around with these. This is pretty much the best way to take a look at whether or not this works. You can also see that the IDs here are always different. That's also very important. The IDs need to be unique and then you should be totally fine with this. And we can proceed to the gen package. Right click new Java class. This is going to be the mod or generation. There we go. And this is going to have one singular static method. And that's going to be the public static void called generate ors. And inside of here, we're going to call biome modifications dot add feature we're then going to say biome selectors dot found in overworld comma generation step and you can see it already suggests to us the underground ores this is exactly what we want to do and then say mod placed features dot tanzanet or placed dot get key dot get there we go and that is all that we need to do now our tanzanet ore and our tanzanite deep slate ore is going to spawn in every overworld biome and we can then duplicate this change this to found in the nether right and then change this to the nether tanzanite ore and then here change this from overworld to found in the end and then just call the end tanzanite ore right here and that is pretty much what we need to do here now what we can do is we can just call this one this particular method in our tutorial mod class so we can say mod or generation that generate ores and that is pretty much all that we need to do in this case and now our ores will already spawn in the world you can either make a new world or you can go into an old world and just tp you know far away so that it then also spawns there so let's go into the game and see if it works or right, we found ourselves back in minecraft and i mean there we go we already found some there are some tanzanite ore there is even more there was one very small one here's another one so in the overworld it spawns completely fine so let's take a look at the nether as well all right we find ourselves in the nether and let's just see usually what i find best is i mean there we go we have actually already found it there we have some and here we have some more so as you can see it definitely spawns well very frequently actually so once again changing around those numbers can always be a good thing and that should be pretty much that so let's go into the end as well and see if it works there as well all right so we find ourselves in the end and let's see there we go we already found some of our end ores so they're going to of course spawn outside but they're also going to spawn in the inside so as you can see also on top so that is pretty awesome indeed and that is pretty much how easy it is to add some custom ore generation to minecraft 
And before people are going to ask, yes, of course, you can also sort by biomes or say, hey, I only want those to be added to specific biomes. So instead of using found in overworld here, what you can do is you can use the include by key over here and then just use a biome keys dot and then just add however many keys you want. So let's say, for example, oh, I want this to only spawn in the stony peaks and I also want this to spawn in, let's say, the plains biome. And there we go. You can add as many keys as you want in this method and it should then only spawn in those particular biomes. Hope that that clarifies this as well. And otherwise, this would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs>